Yeah, Farm this Kingdom podcast. In this episode, we're going to be talking about the brand new Pixar live show that has come to Disney Hollywood Studios. Victoria's there live in Walt Disney World right now, so you might see, hear some slightly different audio music because it's not where she normally is. Um, so, Victoria, do you want to kind of explain a little bit about this new show? Uh, well, the Pixar live show is currently housed where the Beauty and the Beast show is in Hollywood Studios, so just go right down Sunset, take a right, that's where it is. It's basically composed of a 80 or 90 piece orchestra playing scores from various Pixar musicals and also it features Disney characters. So you'll see like Toy Story characters and characters from Up and... They're all oh. Pixar characters. <laughs> oh yeah, you're right, you're right. Yeah, just... <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, it's definitely, I, I mean, 80 orchestra, that's not too small. I mean, I haven't really heard too much about it. I've seen photos and video, but based on the video that I've seen, it, it looks really good. Like, the characters come out and interact with the crowd. I've seen a few with the Green Army Men interacting with children and doing a little bit of the show that they do outside of, um, Toy Story Land. Yeah. I mean, not Toy Story yeah. Land, Pixar Place. <laughs> Pixar Place. So it, it's really interactive. I like it. And it gives you the audience with a chance to appreciate the scores from these beautiful movies. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely, to me, it's um, a kind of cool thing as well of offering something completely different, especially with so little going on at Hollywood Studios right now. Oh, yeah. There's, I mean, with the construction of Toy Story Land and Star Wars Land, it's really not too much going on. But I like that they came up with this concept for guests because it really gives them something to look forward to. Um, I also know that they added a surprise projection show too, so that's a good addition as well. So you have Fantasmic, the Pixar Live, which shows twice a night, and two projection shows. So they're, they're making up for the content in Hollywood Studios. Mm. I mean, personally, I, I kind of, I look, look at this show and I'm thinking, this just should be just something, I'm hoping it's really popular over the summer, and they turn it into a full-time extraction. I mean, based on what I've heard, it hasn't been too crowded, but as the days have gone by, it's, it's starting to build up. It's more so because it hasn't really gotten a lot of promotion. But yeah. once the promotion gets out there, I feel like it'll be just as, it'll be pretty popular. Yeah, I mean, for me, it feels like this week has really been like, um, go, go, go week. Um, the idea of like, um, all the new attractions open, they're getting ready for the summer season. This is it. We're in the business now. You know, there's nothing new coming for the next few months. All the new shows are in place. Everything's ready to go. We've got all this new content. Just, you know, we want to make the money now for, you know, June, July, August, September. And it's kind of getting everything ready for the summer season. Yeah, I feel like they were really just trying to fill in holes, especially with, you know, Flower and Garden ending today at, um, Epcot, so now Epcot's really not going to have anything, and they needed to bring in people for Hollywood Studios, especially with all that construction going on. Yeah. So I feel like Pixar Live, I guess, in a way, makes up for it, especially with the you know anticipation of Pandora, since mostly everyone's going to be there this summer. I feel like, I mean, I feel like Pixar Live was a good thing to drop in there. Yeah, um, so I think had it been like a week or two before probably would have got a little bit more attention but generally i think for families it's good i mean it's like i said i really hope it's something that would actually stick around a bit longer because i think it just seems like a, a great fit so that they can add new content to the new pixar movies very easily and but again hiring 80 orchestra is not cheap i mean i feel like yeah like you said it would be a great way to integrate new like especially coco with coco coming out they can like give a sneak peek of the scores for that film and it'll get people a chance to see that. But I feel like if they had done, if they had, you know, debuted the show in between Pandora and Happily Ever After, it would have done a little bit better. Yeah. Because there was just too much going on with Disney this weekend. You had, you know, Guardians on one side of the coast, you had Pandora and Frozen Summer Games and just a lot going on at once. So it kind of got put in the back seat, especially when they did that surprise projection show. Yeah. Um, definitely, definitely kind of lots of stuff going on there at the, at the parts and kind of a very busy period. And I'm sure like we'll start hearing a little bit more about it. Um, but we'd love to know your guys thoughts on the show. Um, you can comment below. We'll get in touch with us on all the different social medias. Um, where can they find you, Victoria? They can find me on Twitter at he calls me PP and Instagram. He calls me pineapple princess. 
and you can find us on all the different social medias in the Disc Kingdom. You can find us over at DiscKingdom.com. And also remember to hit that subscribe button on the YouTube channel. We have recently um, kind of split the YouTube channel into two different channels. We have got the gaming channel, and then we've also going to have like the parks and collectible side of things. So you definitely want to check that one out there. On that note, guys, thank you very much for watching. We'll see you guys soon. Later's. Bye.